Welcome back to the beginner Node.js course. In section 4, we'll be discussing Express.js, which we've already briefly went over. This is going to go into a little bit more in depth. In this section, section 4, we are going to take a look at MVC architecture using Express.js. We're going to use Express.js to serve static files like CSS, jQuery, and JavaScript in this specific format that we want it. And then we're going to set our view engine, which we'll talk a little bit about later what that is. And then we're going to discover routing and do a simple hello world using Express.js. Again, these are old things that we've sort of dealt with in the past, um, but we haven't really went in depth. But now in this section, we're going to discuss it, it a little bit more in depth so you get a better understanding. So in this video, we're going to do MVC architecture to structure our application. It's not going to be a very code heavy section. This is mostly going to be dealing with how Express.js works, how we want our application to look so that it's better in the long run. So in this video, we're going to learn why we use MVC architecture. We're going to discuss how models, views, and controllers interact with each other. That's the MVC, models, view, controller. We're going to structure our Express application. So why do we need to organize our application? We organize our application using specific architecture patterns so our code is easy to understand. This is supposed to say specific. Um, using an organized architecture that is both common and easy to understand is the key to maintaining applications of all sizes. So if you haven't coded that long, you maybe don't really understand this, but if you've been coding a little bit longer, you might realize at some point that you'll look back at code that you wrote a month ago, two months ago, and you don't really understand what it looks like. Or you might look at, we don't really understand what does what, you just know it works a certain way. Or you might look at someone else's code and you might not really understand what they're trying to do, how it works, even if you understand the language and the framework. So that's a problem. That's something known as spaghetti code when we're doing different functions, different actions all over the place. There's no real architecture. So we use a specific architecture. So we avoid writing sp spaghetti code and that so our team and other developers can understand where specific things are done in our application. So we have the model of the MVC architecture, the M. This is the place where we store information such as user accounts, scores, more information. This is generally where we store all of our data. So you can think of this sort of like an Excel file. It's not an Excel file because that's just a file. This is our database, uh, something like a MongoDB, which we'll discuss during the course. There's also MySQL, PostgreSQL, a bunch of different databases. So that's the database where we host all of our information. Uh, there's also cloud databases as well. We have the controller, which is used to send data from the model to the view and from the view to the model. So for example, when we submit a form, we're sending date. When we write a form on the browser, when we type out our name, maybe our password and hit submit, we are sending data from the view, likely through the controller into the models. So that's common in MVC. Well, that's so later. Finally, we have the view layer, which is the presentation layer where the data is given to the user, where we see it and it looks nice. So models and views cannot directly speak to each other and it requires the controller as a go between at least an MVC architecture. And that's very important to note because we do not want our client to speak directly to our database. Some other forms of architecture do this in uh, unique ways, but with the MVC architectures, we don't want our client to speak directly to our database or model because they might try to steal some data we don't want them to see, or they might uh, try to put in some data that we don't want them to put in. So instead we have this controller, sort of like a safety net, a go-between where we can handle everything ourselves. It's, you can think of it sort of as a filter. I, it essentially controls where the data is inputted, where the data is outputted. Many other languages also have implemented the MVC architecture for Python. There's Django. There's a few others for uh, 
Ruby, there's Ruby on Rails, very popular framework, there's Cake PHP. So this MVC architecture pattern is very popular, thus making it a great method for writing large code bases that many different developers can interact with because a lot of people are familiar with it. For instance, and also we can sort of specialize our code out. For instance, our front end developers will only work in our views and our back end developers will work in the controllers and the model and our SQL slash database developer will largely work in the model layer. So in the course resources, we have the GitHub for this course, which will add into throughout GitHub for section four.